Apostle Daniel Lamola is our speaker uh, this uh, afternoon and I say just a few things about him so that you can get to know you are the brother from South Africa. Daniel Lamola is the founding senior pastor of one of the fastest growing church in South Africa and I would also say in Africa called God's Throne for All Nations, GTFAN. Together with his wife, Prophetess T. Lamola, are pastoring GTFAN based in Pretoria, South Africa. Apostle D. Lamola is a family man. He is blessed with three kids. Letoto, Duthoto, and Modeo. Ha! Huh. He, he, he has penned and authored many, many, many books, actually more than 10 books, and leadership manuals and church leadership training courses. Apostle D. Uh, Daniel Lamola hosts an annual Pastors and Leaders Clinic. It is a conference that attracts pastors and church leaders across the nation of South Africa. And he is an apostolic voice for leadership, church governance, church management, church administration, as well as church finances. Apostle Daniel Lamola is an academic by profession. He's a scholar of the word. He possesses a special grace of teaching and preaching the word with the power and simplicity. He's an apostle of the supernatural manifest, presence of God, used by God in strong discernment, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, Faith, healings, and miracles. In his ministry, the following has been witnessed. The blind receiving their sight, crippled walking, hernia closed, stroke healed, among the many other miracles of healing that have taken place. Many of people have been delivered from various demonic oppression, possession, and torments. Apostle D. Uh, Lamola plant, has planted Several churches across the three provinces of South Africa, Gweteng, um, Pumalanga, and North West Province. Hapo ni mejizikia kama mtu wa South Africa, Mpumalanga. <laughs> I'm getting close there. Through his apostolic and prophetic network, which is called Life and Light Network of Churches, the apostle has provided, or is providing spiritual covering and mentorship to many sons and daughters in the faith with more than six independent churches and ministries which are submitting under his leadership. Apostle Daniel Lamola is so popular in conferences, uh, circles both in South Africa and beyond. He has featured in most of the conferences in South Africa. He has also another ministry which is the marriage ministry. And so Daniel Lamola ministry hosts an annual marriage conference in Swaziland, Mnazini. Apostle D. Lamola is flexible as well as informed to address different topics in Christianity. It's good for us to know that the accolades that we have talked here are good. But please don't receive him because of this. Receive him as a servant of the most holy God so that you can get that blessing that blessing. Mukimchukiwa kama onabi, what do you receive? So if you take him as a servant of the Lord, there will be blessing that you're going to live here with. I pray that you open up your spirit, that God will deposit in your heart that word that you need before you go to celebrate Christmas. Let's all arise. Let's all stand up and welcome the servant of the Lord, Apostle Daniel Amola. He's accompanied by his uh, Paul Bearer, if you like or the man of protocol. Let's make him feel welcome. Shall we just thank the Lord? Father, we appreciate this opportunity and moment. We know you are God. You are the greatest. You are the mightiest. You are the smartest. There is none like you. Do what only you, God, can do. And take all the glory, for it belongs to you. 
In Jesus' name, amen. We may be seated in his presence. <clears throat> Allow us to greet you. Um, this afternoon in Jesus name Amen let's take this time once more to honor the excellent leadership of the bishop the doctor and my bishop we appreciate your kindness and the experiences you gave us since we arrived here. The team that treated us well, the culinary experience, I was actually blaming them that we'll go home being so big. But it's a sign that when you are well welcomed, you will be treated well. We take that as a very serious lesson as the second generation of ministers after the accolade of your ministers, that we will extend the kindness and the humanity that you have shown to us, to others, because of the, imp the impact and impartation that we will have received here in Kenya. We really appreciate your selflessness and your heart. Interacting with a number of people in different ways, it showed that you have labored over many years to the quality of the people that you have raised to be who they are today. And we appreciate you together with my bishop. I want us to appreciate this great grace in the house. <clears throat> I was talking to um, Emmanuel, the protocol that um, there are a number of things that we are taking here as our own lessons because wherever we go we travel our aim is not to impact the people but it's also to learn from the people what we can take back home to extend the kingdom the other side so that that day when you come you find that singing the same song that we're singing and you feel like there's Kenya in South Africa and um, we believe God for grace and mercy. We really honor you. Together with all the leadership team, the pastors, and everybody involved in the organizing of this session, we really appreciate and pray the blessing of God to all of you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're dealing with the foundations of restoration. In the world view of religion, Christianity, especially the subsection of the Pentecostal and Charismatic, is being found wanting in the cycle of quality. If you were to compare other sects such as Roman Catholic movement, you compare to the sect such as Islam, you realize that they invest quite a lot in induction of their people to the faith. In Christianity across the nations of the world, it is the only movement that you can be born again and be a pastor in six months or nine months. Without even formal structured training, mentorship and things like that, and that happens especially in our nation of South Africa. You find a lot of churches mushrooming because of lack of substance and ability to submit, to be discipled and to be trained. And that makes Christianity at a global lens to be looked as a joke or a game. But when we still see great people like what you are doing here, we know the body of Christ in Kenya is in safe hands. And there will be the glory going back to God. It is also in the interest of my heart to always take the church back to the basics. As we believe God for restoration, especially after this wave 
of COVID that shattered. I said, we need to be prepared. And in this session, I'm saying, foundations of restoration, and I'm dealing with the subtitle, honor. Honor. I'm receiving the main reading from the book, the book of Mark, chapter number 6. Mark chapter number 6. And I'm going to borrow from verse 3 through to 6. If you find it, the Bible says, Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah? And Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country. And among his own kind, and in his own house, five. And he could... The students of English understand that when you use the word C-O-U-L-D, cooled, within itself carried the intention of wanting to. But he was prohibited being God. 100% man and 100% God. He cooled there. Do no mighty work save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages teaching. Then the last reading will be in the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 2. It is possible to be in a house of believers who don't believe. I remember an experience the other time, chapter 2 of Kings, verse number 9 and 10. And so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, this is after 8 to 12 years of mentorship. Ask what may I do for you before I'm taken away from you. Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, you have asked a hard thing, a difficult thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Father, bless the reading of your word in Jesus' name. Brethren, I want you to know, mantles are not bought in a supermarket. Mantles you don't receive from Bible semination. Mantles are not from a grocery store. Mantles fall and are caught. Mantles don't Come by favors. The condition was, if you see me, so meaning you need to be involved, present, every day you got to walk with me because you don't know when the chariot will descend. And if the chariot can descend, the day you decided to go somewhere, the mantle will go back. Brethren, there are mantles that are lost. Because the followers were never careful. Elisha died with a mantle. He was buried with a mantle. The Bible says an army of raiders came with a cop. As they were running away, they dropped the cop. The mantle in the grave resurrected the dead body. Because the mantle still wanted to work. But there were no people, genuine, loyal, seven to catch the mantle. The mantle doesn't come because you are the favorite. 
But if you see me being taken as it fall, you catch it. So therefore the subject of honor become critical in our walk with God. Israel never had a problem with honor. In the 31st chapter of the book of Chronicles, the same will be repeated by kings. The Bible says there was a design of a temple and the temple didn't have anything called a storehouse. You see, if you read in the famous book of tithe, bring a tithe in the storehouse so that, they may be, so that there may be food in the storehouse. You know that chapter 3. It is the collection that came in the book of Chronicles that forced the priest to edit the temple to add on its architectural plan to add a storehouse. The storehouse was built because of abundance in the temple. They brought in so much that there was no space. The Bible says it was heaps upon heaps. And it was upon the demand of what they brought that the priest student said, let's build up a storehouse. Years later, they moved into Babylon. Then they learned strange things in Babylon. One, they learned stinginess. In Babylon and Egypt, you are told you can go, but don't go too far. You can serve, but have reservations. Egypt says, go worship God, but let your wealth remain here. Babylon says you can't worship God with your substance. So Israel in Babylon, they learn stinginess. And when God came, he raised voices to address the ills that came into the system of Israel because of slavery. And he says, you rob me. Number two, he says, you dishonor me. You have got courage even to bring a blind animal on my altar. Something you have never done before. But now, you have got the boldness to can even offer a lame sacrifice. Dishonor. Number three, they learned a problem of hybrid spirituality. Hybrid spirituality is the mix-mix. I can go to church to worship on Sunday, but on Monday I can do this. I can go to church to do this, and, and, and on the other day I can go there to do. So in, in Babylon they learned the hybrid system of worship. And God therefore needed to restore them. He sent the last prophet, Mal Malachi. When Malachi came, he releases four messages. They silence between heaven and earth for 400 years after the last messenger. The last messenger comes, speaks. When he closed in chapter 4, heaven kept quiet to the earth for 400 years to allow the earth to meditate on the last message of the messenger. And that message was honor. When you honor God, you will find it easy to honor your man of God. Honor it's regarding or putting a person in high esteem. It means of great respect in actions, in words, intentions, especially in their absence. When you honor a person, you will speak good even when they are not around. It is so easy to be hypocritical to talk good to a person when you see them. But when they go, you speak the opposite. That's dishonor. Honor means taking a person in high regard. Esteeming a person through your words, actions, and intentions, especially in their absence. But it also means to see a human being as God sees them. 
to see somebody as God sees them. To look through the eye. Remember in the book of Kings, the story of Elisha. The sons of the prophet, they look at Elisha. They see the bald head. They make a joke. And they say, bald head, bald head. He prayed. The Bible says, God released she bears. They came and killed all of them. Few chapters, another woman see the same prophet walking on the same street. And she said, I perceive in my heart, this is a man of God. And she said, let's build up a chamber for him. Because of that, God released a miracle for her womb. That the power from Kenya power line of that couple was down. But by honor, there was reactivation and restoration. On the other chapter, they died for dishonor. On the other time, they received a miracle. So when we say honor, we mean look at a person as God looks at them. They say in Jesus, is this not the carpenter's son? Is this not the brother of James? Does he not stay in a street? A problem we can see God because we look at man after biological chronos. We fail to see God because we are blocked in looking at man as man. Honor should not be confused. It is not worshiping man. But through honor, when we honor God, but through honoring whom God has honored, in so doing we worship God. Let me put it simple. When you honor a man that, or a woman that God chose and appointed, as you honor them, that act is interpreted as worshiping God. You see, we need to understand, worship is not melody, or worship is not song. Songs and what we mix up here is but a part of worship. That is why the Bible says the time is coming and now is the time where the true worshippers will worship the Father in truth and in spirit. Everybody can praise God, but not everybody can worship God. The Bible says let everything that has breath praise the name of the Lord. So everybody that has breath can praise. Drunk you can praise. Hungry you can praise. But worship is exclusive to those that walk in truth and in spirit. It is Abraham in Genesis 22 who says, Remain here with the donkey. I and son, we are going up to do what? To worship. There were no music instrument. There were no singing. It was a sacrifice. He called it worship. Worship is honoring God for who he is, not what he has done. Familiarity over time comes. And that tend many to dishonor and have a subtle dishonor. Dishonor defines people on the basis of their nationality, their ethnicity, tribe, their career or genealogy, and what is generally known of such a person. But honor looks at a man from the point of view or from the reference of God. Somebody shout honor. Come on, somebody shout honor. In Mark 6, 5 where we read, the Bible says, Jesus being Lord. You are a good Bible student, you understand. It is in Matthew 15, verse 29, and verse number 30. The Bible says, they brought so many people to Jesus. Some were maimed, some were blind, some were deaf, some were crippled, some had different conditions. And verse 30 says, he healed all of them. But the same Jesus, who flipped over to the next chapter, he has got a hurdle of performing miracles. He wanted to perform miracles. But the Bible says. He could not. He wanted to. Because of their 
dishonor, he even marveled at their disbelief. You know, sometimes we are the reason why God doesn't move. Sometimes we are the reason why a person can come with a tumor to church and go back with a tumor. Because when we dishonor, we block the flow of the supernatural. They said, is this not the son of Mary? Is this not the son of who? Is this not the son of what? And in so doing, the Bible says, Jesus could not perform any more miracle except that he laid hands on a few. This is a God that could walk and, and cleanse the leper. This is a God that could resurrect Lazarus. This is the God that stopped the flow of the blood. This is the God that healed the man that was there on the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. But today, he has got limitation because the attitude of dishonor was in the house. It means with our attitude, we can become an impediment for somebody who believes God for a great healing not to be healed because we just see our, our man of God as our pastor, not as a man that cometh from God. In Matthew, he healed all of them. In Mark, he can't. And he gives a reason. He says, the reason I could not is because, number one, you, you track me back to my, my biological mother. But before Mary came, I carried Mary. When Mary was pregnant with the, with the child, the son carried both the child and the mother in his hand. So the pregnancy of Mary was kept by the Christ. There could be no human virus or sickness that could have affected the pregnancy of Mary. That is why he said to Abraham, before Abraham, I was. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. In the creation of heaven and earth, he was there. He created all of us. He can heal all of us of any condition. But you see, once we come with an attitude of dishonor, we become a limitation. Honor gives confidence and courage to he that is honored to conquer. Honor breeds confidence. The Bible says, cast not away your confidence, for it has such a great recompense and reward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you honor, it is in the book of 2 Samuel chapter number 18, verse 1, 2, and 3. The Bible says, the mighty man of David wanted to go to war. And David volunteered and said, I am going with you to fight. In verse 3, they says, no, you are not coming with us. You are worth more than 10,000 soldiers. Honor reject the notion of equality to who God chose. Democratically, we are equal. But spiritually, they are mantles that God has given to individuals. And when you recognize that mantle like Elisha, the Bible says he organized a speed bride. He took all his farming equipment. He broke them. He took all the cows. He slaughtered them. He made the he made a bride. He called all the people and said, I found a man that has got the mantle. I'm going to follow him wherever he goes. God is hidden in a man. God is hidden in a man. We can only go to give to God by giving into a man. There is no one. If you take your money and you throw it up to God to the heavens, it will be pulled by the power of gravity because God has set up systems to say this is how things ought to work the people said David you are not going with us you, you are alone if we die is okay this is in the Bible it says if you die is okay if we die is okay but you are worth more than 10,000 soldiers alone these are the servants 
they say you're worth. You see, when you honor, you will never be tempted to think you're equal. When you honor, you will never be tempted to think of equal reception. You'll always know God is a God of order. Hallelujah. Dishonor is a sign of forgetfulness. You know, when people forget, they step into the mode of honor. You are a good Bible student. You read in the, the book of 1 Samuel from 22. When David was in the cave of Adullah, the Bible says men that were distressed, that were poor, that had nothing, they came to the cave of Adullah. They joined him. Here, in the book of 2 Samuel, they are now called the mighty men of David. They are now called lion killers. One of them slaughtered people until his hand was welded to the sword. But when you forget what the grace has done for you, you think we are all equal. When you forgot that in 1 Samuel 22, you were not a mighty man. You see, as people, we forget too quick. We forget that some of us, God used this altar by the grace of God to restore us into a place of health. Some of us were in good careers because of the impact and the influence of the church. Some of us, we are gospel artists because of the seed planted in the church. But we forget. I say we forget. Some of us, we didn't know how to speak English if it was not the church. Listen to you now. You speak English with nose. Because of the church. It, it built your confidence. You could not stand before people. You are always vibrating. But now, you can even tell us, this side, this side, hallelujah. Because of the church. When we forget, we dishonor. Because we think it's by our work hard, our working hard. We think it's because of our merit. We, we think it's because of our effort. We forget in the cave of Adullah, we were nobodies. We were distressed. We were broke. We were poor. We were hopeless. Then the grace that God has given unto, unto David, it changed us. So today, we are tempted to think equality with David. But these guys, they said, no. My Lord, it is not going to be like that. So there are a few things that I want you to see out of the two stories that I read. One is that Elisha followed one man. Honor caused you to funnel your focus and persuasion. I don't know here in Kenya, but tell me what is the name that you use in Kenya if a person go to the college or to the university and study teaching and uh, quit in first year, the following year, they go back to university, they do nursing, and they quit at the end of that year, but they pass it first year. Then the other year, they go to do accountant, but they do it for first year, they pass and they quit. And the other year, they do medicine, they do it for one year, they pass and they quit. And the other year, they do electrical engineering. They do it for one year and they pass and they quit. The other year, they do journalism. And they do it for one year, they pass. So they've got successful first year six times. What do you call them here? Quitters. Are they quitters or what? So you see, if you don't complete by focus, you become nothing. You passed mathematics, but you quitted. You went to biological sciences. You passed, but you quitted. You went to law. You passed first year, you quitted. You become nothing. So fragmented focus robs the body of Christ of quality. When a new man of God come in the city, you are the first one to run there. After three years, another new man of God come in the city with a high prophetic level. You go, you go over there. But Elisha said, I found one man. I will follow the man. 
And Elisha, Elijah was not perfect. Elijah, the Bible says in James 5, he was a normal man like all of us, with like passions. Number two, Elijah had fear. The woman spoke one day, and Elijah hid himself. He even prayed to die. So Elijah was not an angel, was not a god, was a normal man. Who could make mistakes? Honor looks beyond the limitations of men. You don't honor a man because of what they did or they didn't do. Elisha followed Elijah for 8 to 12 years until he received the mantle. The issue here is that mantles don't come in the first 6 months. You need to move from Gilgal. And from Gilgal, you find a group of prophets that tells you true prophecy that he's going to be taken away. But you need internal tenacity and courage because you have identified a man that God has chose for you. You say, I will follow. I will go. Even if you move from Gilgal to Bethel, I will follow you. From Bethel to Jericho, I'll follow you. From Jericho to Jordan, I'll follow you. I'll go with you. When it's raining, when it's not raining, when there are people, when there are no people, you can count on me. Even if we have let five count me as one of the five people because I understand the principle of honor. Elisha followed one man. You see, if you follow different courses, even the university cannot confer a degree to you. The reason we don't produce people of impact to shake regions is because you have got 5% of your pastor, 5% of pastor A, 5% of pastor B, 5% of pastor C, five, then you have got nothing. You are a 5% preacher. But if you master one thing, drink it, reproduce it, you become a giant. Because a lion will give back to a lion. Amen. When you honor, you will sacrifice. Elisha killed everything. That was his business for the sake of the mantle that he saw. Honor pushes you to sacrifice. The Bible says, where your heart is, there your treasure is. If you want to know how much of God is in your heart, check how much of your budget and with God. Where your budget goes tells you where your, your heart is. If you talk to a beer man or a drunkard man, look into his bank statement. It tells you all the bottle stores where he has been swiping. Some of us, we don't even have in our statement at the bank the name of our church that we transferred money. Imagine how wonderful it would be seeing the name of your church on your bank statement. I say, this is my church. On my statement, I'm sponsoring because I'm honoring my man of God. So Elisha honored. When you honor, you make yourself available. That's why God doesn't anoint the anointed. God doesn't anoint the gifted. God anoints the available. When you are available and you pursue and you follow and you see God in a man, then you receive. He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall of a prophet reward received. He was not easily discouraged. You see, when you sing it out and you pursue it, there will be critics. There will be criticism. There will be people telling he's going away. But what you have seen. Remember as he was plowing. The Bible says Elijah passed by. He threw the mantle. There is a baby that leaked. When, when, when Elizabeth met with Mary. Something inside kicked, came back to life. And that encounter. It's something that you should never forget. When you came here. And God connected you to this church. You need to know. 
That's where the baby kicked. That's where the baby came to life. And the, the sons of the prophet, they came. They say, you know, this man is going, to be, is going to be taken. But that was even better. Elijah himself, he said to Elisha, remain here. I'm going. Elisha followed by force. He followed by force. Against the counsel of the man of God, Elijah. He said, I've seen something in you. I'm going. I'm honoring this. I'm not worshipping you. But I'm honoring what God has put on you. Romans 12 says, give honor to where honor is due. The difference between Elisha and the rest of the other sons of the prophets is that he was hungry and thirsty for God. You see, when you honor, you become hungry. When you honor, Matthew put it this way, blessed are they that hunger and thirst for they shall be filled. When you honor, esteem, value that which God values, you shall be filled. You shall be endured. And Elisha went all the way to the end until he parted the sea. And this is what I want you to see in a few minutes to close. Elijah performed 60 miracles, if we calculate, from the time of his existence in Tishbite to the Jordan. If you count all the miracles, it was 16. But the highest and the 16th was the parting of the Jordan and being taken by the chariots. Elisha performed 32 and his lowest was the parting which is the highest of the father. Where Elijah ended by parting the Jordan, Elisha started by parting the Jordan. There is a price for following. Do you hear what I'm saying? Where Elijah put a full stop and said, Lord Ebenezer, I thank you to this far. When Elisha started, he started at the highest top of Elijah's miracles. So Elijah, Elijah, Elias, he died, or not died, he was translated to glory after parting the waters. His son that followed, served, loyal to him, that thing came on him. This thing comes. Are you hearing me? This thing comes. May the Lord raise a people that one day in many years to come when the Lord recall our bishop the mantle will not be buried I hope somebody is hearing me may one day in many years to come maybe there's somebody who said I honored I kneeled before you I watched you. I observed you. I saw you. I followed you. I was not worshipping you. But I recognize there is a God that you are carrying that not any other man in Kenya has. At that level, Elisha was observing. You see, in God, it always remained with the one following. Eh, Joshua, Joshua, the other people were playing soccer and other games. Joshua remained to study the, the, the cloud as it descended on the tabernacle. Other people left, but Joshua remained watching. When Moses died, God said, you're coming. These things... 
the mantle falls by divine protocol. Mantles fall by the ladder of heaven. Mantles fall not by favor, not by light, but if you see me being taken. You see, if you study five first years, you become nothing. You become nothing. But if one person can endure and go to school for five years or six years and graduate and is called a doctor, that one also has six years of being in the university, but is called nothing. So we need consistency and singleness of heart in our service. Serve until the day you are promoted to go to work in Dubai. The pastor has a nightmare. A nightmare of asking how many people will I find to replace this man? Because you served the Lord in single-heartedness. You made a mark. You see, when you are full of the Holy Ghost, wherever you serve and whatever you do, there need to be landmarks. The Bible used various, various symbols of the Holy Ghost. It says it's fire. You see, it's fire can erupt in the field. You don't need to be told there was fire. You will see there was fire. It uses water. If, water, if kids play on the water and they walk in here, you don't need to hear them say, Mommy, we were never in the water. You just look at the floor. It tells you they were in the water. So a child of God filled with honor Filled with the Holy Ghost. Wherever they pass, they are landmarks. They are not easily forgotten. They will remember and say, people played keyboard, but there was this one. They'll say, people played guitar, but there was this one. People led songs, but there was this one. Why? When you are filled up with honor, you follow wholeheartedly. When you see me, that's the catch. You can't see because you're not available. You can't see because you're not following. Elisha did the greatest tragedy. He buried the mantle. The mantle worked still in the grave. May you be available. May the Lord help you to be available. May you honor. May you follow. May you pursue. May the good Lord bless all of you. Shalom, shalom.